Hello friends. In this video, we will learn about how we can use work energy theorem to calculate the forces on a hammer head and we will also calculate the velocity of the hammer head when it falls through a certain distance. So let us illustrate all this using an example. So this problem says we have a 200 kg of a steel hammer head. So this is the a steel hammer head and the weight of this is given that is you can say mass is given mass of this hammer head is 200 kg of a pile driver is lifted by 3 meter height so the height by which it has been lifted is given so let's call this height as s so this has been lifted by height s is equals to 3 meter above the top of vertical i beam being driven into the ground so this is the i beam so what is happening in this case when this hammer head falls onto this i beam this goes down into the ground so this kind of behavior or this kind of mechanism is often used to driven the uh, i beam inside the ground so the hammer head is in is then dropped driving the i beam through 7.4 centimeter deeper into the ground so this is the initial position of i beam and then when the the hammer falls on this i beam this goes inside and this goes into the ground by a height of 7.4 centimeter so point 2 is the initial situation and point 3 is the final situation when the hammer head has fallen Moreover, it is also given that the vertical guide that is the rails exert a constant force of 60 Newton friction force on the hammer head. So these are the vertical guides. Basically, uh, this hammer head is falling in the downward direction by guiding of this vertical rails. So vertical rails are applying a friction force that is in the top direction, upward direction and the magnitude of friction force is given. This is 60 Newton. So let's write friction force magnitude that is 60 Newton. Use the work energy theorem to find the speed of hammer head just as it hits the I beam. So we have to find a speed of hammer head just it hits the i beam that is point number two so this is the initial situation and when this hammer head falls this is going to collide with the i beam first it will collide at point number two and then it will push the i beam inside the ground so we have to first find velocity at point number two so let's call this velocity as v2 so let us first calculate this and then we will discuss the second part now before proceeding further we have to make the free body diagram so there are three points in this case the point one that is just a starting point the velocity of the hammer head at this point is zero so we can say v1 is zero and at point v2 it will have some velocity so we have to find what is the velocity at point two and finally it will come to rest after driving the i beam inside the ground and this velocity will again be zero so final velocity is again zero so v1 is zero as well as v3 is zero so we have to find v2 so we'll consider this problem in two parts and we will use work energy theorem first part will consider motion of this hammer head between point one and point two so let us first consider free body diagram when this hammer head is falling between point 1 and point 2. So let us first consider motion between point 1 to point 2. So in this case what are the forces that is acting? You see one force that is acting on this hammer head is its weight that is mz. And there is a friction force that is acting due to the rails the guided rails and this force in the upper direction that is F. So the total force in the downward direction we can say so total force and this force let us calculate in the downward direction so this will be mg minus F. 
So we can calculate this value because we know mass of this hammer head that is 200 kg and then we have to multiply by gravity that is 9.8 meter per second square and the friction force is given that is nothing but 60 Newton. So if you calculate this, this will turn out to be 1900 Newton that is 1900 Newton. So now I know between the journey from point 1 to point 2 the average or resultant total force acting in the downward direction and the magnitude of that force is 1900 Newton. Now we can also calculate the work done during point 1 to point 2. So we can calculate work done. So if you remember work done is nothing but force in this case the resultant force dot displacement. Now force is acting in the downward direction resultant force is acting in the downward direction and motion is also in the downward direction. So angle between force vector and displacement vector is 0 degree. So we can simply write this as F magnitude of S magnitude of F and cos of phi in this case this phi is 0 degree. So this simply becomes F times S that is magnitude of F and magnitude of S. So magnitude of F is 1900 and the distance is given because this has fallen through a distance of 3 meter so we can write 3 here and then we can calculate total work done in this journey that is 5700 zool. So what is my target? My target is to calculate velocity at point 2. So now I can use work energy theorem. So if you use work energy theorem, we can write total work done is equals to change in kinetic energy. And that is nothing but K2 minus K1. Now if you remember the velocity at point 1 because it had just started the motion, hammer had just started the motion at point 1, velocity at point 1 is 0. So kinetic energy is also 0 because kinetic energy is half m one, half m v1 square. So kinetic energy at point 1 is 0 because velocity is 0 and K2 I can write half m v2 square. So from here we can calculate v2. So v2 is nothing but 2 times w total and this divided by m and then I have to take a square root of all this. So this is the velocity. So we have already calculated total work done in this motion so we can plug this so 2 times w is 5700 0, 0, and this divided by mass and mass is known that is 200 kg. So if you calculate all this this will turn out to be 7.55 meter per second. So this is the velocity at point 2. So initially at point 1 it has velocity v1 is equals to 0 at point 2 it has a velocity of 7.55 meter per second so v2 is basically 7.55 meter per second so you see velocity has increased why this velocity has increased because in this case gravity is doing work Friction is also doing work but the friction is doing negative work and gravity is doing positive work and the gravity work done is more compared to the frictional work done and that's why the velocity of this hammer has increased from point 1 to point 2. Now let us consider motion of this particle or this hammer head from point 2 to point 3. So what are the forces that is acting on the hammer when it is moving from point 2 to point 3. So you see at point 2 this hammer is going to collide with the I-beam.
So basically hammer will apply a force on the beam and the Newton's third law if you will apply the same amount of force will also be applied to the hammer. So in other words at point 2 on hammer a upward force will be applied. Let's call that force as a normal N. Now this normal force will also act in the journey from point to point 3 but this force will not be constant at point 2 this force will be maximum and it will slowly slowly decrease and it will be minimum at point 3. So the force this normal force between point 2 to point 3 is not a constant force it's basically a changing it's a variable force but to simplify the problem what we will do is we will assume that this force is a constant force or uniform force and based upon that we will try to solve this problem. So what is the free body diagram when this is moving from point 2 to point 3. So hammer is moving from point 2 to point 3. So mg will be acting and what other force will be, act will be acting. You will have this friction force that is due to the guided rail and apart from this you will also have a normal reaction. Let's call a small n. So three forces are acting mg, friction and normal reaction. So I can show normal reaction this side. So there are three forces are acting. So we can calculate the net resultant force or net downward force. So let us calculate net downward force. So we can calculate net downward force. So this will be mg is in the downward direction, normal reaction in the upward direction and the friction force is also in the upward direction. So this is the net force. Now once I know the force we can calculate total work done when it moves from point 2 to point 3. So work done when it moves from point 2 to point 3. So this is point 2 and this is point 3 and this hammer is moving from point 2 to point 3. And this distance is given that is this distance S23 that is the distance traveled from point 2 to point 3 that is 7.4 centimeter that is given in the problem so that is 0 0.074 meter. So now I know the distance so we can calculate total work that is nothing but total force times total displacement that is S23 and then we have to take angle cos of phi. Now the displacement in the downward direction and the resultant force is also in the downward direction. So this is cos of 0 degree. So this is simply magnitude of F that is nothing but mg minus n minus F and displacement S23 is simply uh, you can write 0 0.074 meter. So this is the total amount of work. We will plug all this value in the end. So this is mg minus n minus f and this is S23 that is 0 0.074. Now apply work energy theorem. So what is the work energy theorem? So total work done is nothing but change in kinetic energy. And the change in kinetic energy from point 2 to point 3 is nothing but kinetic energy at point 3 minus kinetic energy at point 2. Now at point 2, at point 3, basically this hammer is going to come into the rest. So velocity at point 3 will be 0. So if velocity is 0, then kinetic energy will be 0. So I can also write this is K3 is 0, that is kinetic energy at point 3 is 0. And this is minus K2. So this is total work done. And now we know total work done. That is nothing but Mg minus N minus F S23. And this is equals to minus K2. Now if you solve, you can calculate N from here. So you can write N is equals to W minus F plus K2 and this divided by S23. 
So if you simplify, you can calculate normal reaction. So this is the normal reaction we have when this hammer is falling from point 0.2 to point 0.3. So now we can plug all this value and then we can get the normal reaction. So normal reaction will be W is the amount of work done that we just calculated. So this is no W is basically bait that is 1960 Newton bait of the hammer. So if you remember the bait of hammer is given in the problem. So this is 200 kg and then you multiply by Z that is 1960 that is the bait of the hammer. So that is the W. Friction force is 60 Newton and K2 that is the kinetic energy at point 2. So we have already calculated this value. So this is again in Newton and the kinetic energy at point 2 is nothing but 5700. So this is same as work done from point 1 to point 2. So you remember the kinetic energy at point 2 is nothing but work done because K1 is 0. So K2 is equals to work done when this moves from point 1 to point 2 and the work done value is 5700 Joule. So we can plug this here. So this is K2 is 5700 and this divided by 0.074 so if you calculate all this normal reaction will be 79000 newton or 79 kilo newton so this is the normal reaction that will be applied on the hammer by the i beam and if you see the newton's third law the same amount of force will be applied by the hammer onto the i beam so one important point in this case you see this bait this normal reaction is much much larger than the bait of the hammer. What is the bait of the hammer that is 1960 Newton that is 1.96 kilo Newton so approximately 2 kilo Newton. So the bait of hammer is approximately 2 kilo Newton and the normal reaction that is acting is 80 kilo Newton approximately 80 kilo Newton. So this is around 40 times more. So if you lift the hammer by 3 meter and it basically applies a force that is 40 times more than the bait of the hammer. If you can increase height even further you can apply more more impact force to the I beam and this is happening because if you increase the height more work is done and subsequently that work gets converted into the kinetic energy that increases the velocity and that finally increases the impact force. Now let us summarize all this whatever we discuss in this problem. So at point 1, point 1 velocity is 0 and at point 2 there is an increase in the velocity. So we will have some kinetic energy in this case and that value will increase. At point 3, once again velocity is 0 and the kinetic energy is again 0. So at point 1, also kinetic energy is 0. So from 1 to 2, there is an increase in the kinetic energy. So if you see the journey from 1 to 2, there is an increase in the kinetic energy. But if you go from 2 to 3, there is a decrease in the kinetic energy. So there is an increase in the 1 to 2 and there is a decrease in kinetic energy from 2 to 3. So this increase and decrease are equal and that's why finally uh, the velocity or the final kinetic energy in case 1 and case 3 is same that is equals to 0. But more important point from point 1 to 2 the resultant force is in the downward direction and that's why the kinetic energy is increasing resultant force is in the downward direction it will do some work on the hammer and it will increase its kinetic energy but if you go from point 2 to 3 the resultant force is in the upward direction that will basically decrease the kinetic energy decrease the velocity and finally the velocity will be zero in this case at point 3. 
hope you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed like and subscribe our channel and i will see you in the next video thanks a lot